In this video, I'll show how to use single instruction multiple data instructions from C code, often abbreviated as SIMD. I'm developing on a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, and we'll show how SIMD can speed up the motion detection algorithm that's at the heart of my Pimera project. To do traditional motion detection, you must compare each corresponding pixel between two frames of image data, which is the very definition of and the perfect candidate for single instruction multiple data. I'll show two versions of the algorithm, one in C code without SIMD instructions and another with. We'll compare each in terms of performance. Since the title of this video mentions intrinsics, I should define that first. Wikipedia has a great summary, which is not there. Give me a minute. There it is. All right. So basically, intrinsics, an intrinsic is a function whose implementation is handed, handled specially in a special way by the compiler. It also mentions they're used to explicitly implement vectorization in languages which do not address such constructs. Hey, that's us. However, before we can use SIMD, we need to figure out what instructions and which intrinsics are available to us. I'm developing on a Raspberry Pi 3B+. And luckily, there's this very helpful page that covers the CPU used in each uh, Raspberry Pi model here. So I'm on 3B+. Let's look at here. It says BCM2837B0, which is this one. And it also mentions that it's essentially the same as the above. And the above mentions ARM V8. All right, that gives us something to go on. Now we know that. Now that we know that, we need to look up the processor manufacturer's docs for SIMD. ARM has a great summary page that gives us some useful information. This is specifically about Neon. I know that Neon is relevant here, but what I really am keying in on is the ARMv8 mention here. It mentions that the registers are 128-bit, which is great. And that means it should have instructions for processing 16 8-bit integers at a time, which is going to be amazing. Oh yeah, right here. It says right here. 16 8-bit operations per instruction. Very, very good. Okay. So in order to know which intrinsic functions are available in C, ARM has given us this guide here. So I know I'm dealing with Neon and uh, A64, which gives me uh, a list, but also you can filter by what type of operation you're doing, and the return base type, which is good. And the element bit size, basically if you're operating on vectors with 8-bit elements or 16-bit elements or larger. One of the first operations we're going to do is a load. And it looks like there's a um, one that returns 16 8-bit integers, or basically loads that many integers into a vector register. OK, I'll get back to that in a bit. So let's look at the code and get started. Here's how we prepare our C code to use ARM intrinsics, at least the ones available on this platform. I haven't yet to see what's available on a Raspberry Pi Zero. I assume the same is going to be, this is going to be available on a Raspberry Pi 4 since they use the same ARM architecture. Okay, let's run through briefly motion detection. I covered it in previous video and possibly two previous videos, but in case this is the first one you watch, a typical motion detection algorithm looks like this. You convert you, you, in many cases, you're working with RGB pixel data, so you have the first step is to convert it to grayscale. Then for each current pixel, you know, in the current frame, subtract it from the corresponding pixel in the previous frame, take the absolute value of the subtraction. If that value, that result, is above a threshold, 
consider the pixel as having changed, and then if enough pixels have changed, we've detected motion. Okay, so in order to do this, um, I'll scroll down and show you that I've got a non-SIMD version and the SIMD version. They're going to be operating on the same data. Since I really want to be able to process 1920 by 1080 pixels quickly, that's the data that I'm going to be testing with. So I'm setting up the dimensions here. This will count the number of changed pixels in our frame. If a pixel frame to frame changes you know, 10 or more by, by 10 or more, then we count that pixel as having changed. And if more than 10 pixels or 10 or more pixels have changed, we consider the frame, the new frame to have motion. All right, so I'm setting up some buffers, current and previous frame buffers going to predefine the length for each, allocate the memory, fill both with the value of 10, or so both will be starting with a value of 10. And then occasionally, I'm going to fill previous with the value of 20. That way, this is our operation we'll be doing. We'll, doing, we'll be doing current minus previous, you know, like the current pixel at i minus previous's pixel at i, for example. So I want 10 minus 20 to go negative uh, so that we can ensure that the absolute value is being handled correctly. Okay, I hope that made sense. So in order to make sure that I'm comparing apples to apples, uh, the SIMD version will be using pointers in the loop to jump ahead. So I created a for loop with pointers for the non-SIMD version. So starting a pointer, a C pointer, pointing to the head of the current buffer, frame buffer. It's likewise for P. C max um, will hold the address that's just beyond our current buffer so that we know when to stop right here. We're going to loop while C is less than C max. And we're going to be jumping ahead just by one memory location just by one 8-bit integer at a time. And here's the algorithm that we talked about up above in comments. We So C is a pointer, so we have to dereference it to get the actual value that lives at that memory location. So we take the value at the current location and uh, pointed to by C, subtract it from P, or subtract P, and we take the absolute value of that, we get the delta, which, in, uh, let's see, 10 minus 10 will be the delta of 0, but 10 minus 20, and then absolute value will be a delta of 10, because 10 minus 20 is negative 10. Absolute value of that is 10. I know you understand that, but I just want to lay out the math to make sure that we're all on the same page. Okay, so if the delta of 10 is greater than or equal to our threshold of 10, We've detected motion, so increment our counter. That's the basics of the logic. I'm also starting a timer, getting another timer, subtracting the start time to get milliseconds that have passed, and then printing out how much time that this loop took us and how many pixels we had detected. And then if we've detected enough, I'm just going to print out motion detected. Oh, this is the same value. It doesn't matter. It's fine. Okay. Now for the SIMD version. This will take a little bit longer to explain, but it's the same, mostly the same operations, but just in a different way, in batch. So you have to think about it a little bit differently. All right, let's reset our counters, reset our iterator pointer to the head of each buffer, recalculate max just for good measure. Uh, we actually don't need to do this because that value has not changed. Start a new timer. Our batch size is going to be 16 because our platform can handle 16 8-bit operations at a time, or operation on 16 8-bit integers. There we go. Okay, so the good thing about intrinsics is it gives us C-style ways of doing SIMD. 
These are new types declared in that arm neon header file that I included at the top. I'm declaring some registers to use. Uh, I prefixed this one with underscore just because we had C right here, just so there's no name collisions. Okay, A, B, and C. This um, I wanted to store, so this actually duplicates our pixel delta threshold into our 8 by 16 register, because we're going to be using that to compare, and we're going to compare across all 16 pixel values at a time, which means we have to have our comparison value in a register with 16 values. Likewise, we're going to be using a register that has a 1 in every element, and I don't know that we end up using this one, but we'll see. It's maybe a old code lingering around. Okay, so here's the loop. Loop until we reach the end of our buffer. We're just looping or using current, the current frame pointer and the, the max for the current buffer. We're going to be jumping by the batch size, and the batch size up here is 16 because we can process 16 8-bit integers at a time. So we'll increment C and P together, just like we did here, but here we just incremented each by one. Okay, the first thing we want to do is get the data that each pointer points to into the vector registers. So this is the operation for loading the Q suffix. Okay, so this is like load one, type unsigned int eight. But the Q is kind of their suffix for loading 16 instead of eight. So if it was this, it would only be loading eight 8-bit eight integers, but with Q it loads 16 8-bit eight integers from this pointer location, this memory location. All right, so we want to get C and P into two separate vector registers. And here's where we actually do the absolute value of a subtraction. So intrinsics are awesome. There's an operation that does both of these altogether. I will show this. Let's Let's walk through, let's do arithmetic, and I found it under absolute. Here's absolute difference, and I'll go up to, let's go to the unsigned ones first. This is the one we used, VABDQ U8. So it says, subtracts the elements of the vector of the second source from the corresponding elements of the first source, places the absolute values of the result into a vector. So it does a subtraction, then takes the absolute value of the result and stores it into our return vector, which is great. It's exactly what we need in one vector operation. So C is going to hold this. Now we need to compare. We need to see which elements are greater than our pixel delta threshold, which currently is 10. So comparisons, I'll show you those. I'm using greater than or equal to. Let me check the name for it. VCGEQ. It was U8. Yep. Oh, come on. Where'd it go? There it is. Compares each vector element in the first with the corresponding element in the second. If the first unsigned value is greater than or equal to the second, it sets every bit of the corresponding vector element in the destination to one. So it fills the element in the return vector with ones in every bit location. Otherwise, it sets every bit to zero. So in the end, Let's say the first element of C is above our threshold of 10. The first element of A is going to have a 1 in every bit location. And the next element, if it doesn't uh, pass the comparison, will have zeros. It's called a bit mask. So we have to do some extra thinking and extra logic to, to handle that. What we really want to do is count the number of uh, pixels where the element was greater than the threshold. 
And we can do that by summing across the vector, like everything in, we could sum up everything in C. So what we end up doing is doing that down here. And we, um, we use the bit mask to um, put a one in every element where this condition passed, where this condition was true. To do that, we do a bitwise and with the bit mask that resulted, that came out of the comparison, and a vector that has a just a one in every spot. Not every bit is one, but just a one. So the least significant bit of this, of each element is one. And we do that up here. So this duplicates the value, the integer value of one into every element of this eight by 16 vector register. I hope that makes sense. So we're doing the comparison. Each element that passes the comparison will be filled with ones, one in every bit location. We take a bitwise and against the vector with those comparison bit masks and it with actual literal value ones to get a resulting vector which has either a one or a zero in every element location based on whether it passed the comparison. So we basically converted the bit mask into a one or zero in every location that signifies whether the comparison passed. Okay, that was probably way too much re-explaining, but I just wanted to explain it a couple ways. Now that we have a one in the location where the comparison passed, we can sum across the vector. So within this register, it loops and says, all right, first element, add to the second element, add to the third element, all the way up to 16, and then it will return the result. So this will count how many pixels have changed in this pass, this iteration of the loop. And we sum across the vector, return it back, and add it to our changed pixels counter. And that's our algorithm. And then we will print out the results. So I don't think I changed anything. Actually, I did. I changed one thing above. Um, and that's the result. So without SIMD, 49 milliseconds, we counted changed pixels 20, which is what we wanted because we filled it with 20 different pixel values that would trigger. And with SIMD, it was 13 milliseconds. So that's a pretty good speed up. Um, less than half, which is great. It's shaved off a lot of time, which is exactly what we'd hoped for, for SIMD instructions. Not quite like a 1 16th speed up, but it's still very useful to us since I want to get as close to I can as being able to process 1080p at 30 frames per second with no hiccups. So I could do, you know, assuming I was actually going to be comparing every single pixel, which I may end up not being, not do that in the end. <clears throat> but this gets us pretty close to where I can do 30 frames per second. And sometimes, you know, the, the, the pixel comparisons will happen in a different thread and it will technically take longer than than the time, uh, you know, it'll span, processing will span multiple frames, but still, this is a pretty good speed up. I will take it. And there's surely more optimizations that we could do. Um, like I mentioned, I probably won't end up processing every pixel. Pimera will likely have the option where you can select a region where you, a um, small region where you want it to do the comparison, or I may end up feeding it not even if we're recording video at 1080p, I may do the motion detection on six, excuse me, 640 by 480 data instead, and that will make things a lot faster. Okay, I hope that was interesting. Thank you for watching. In the next video, I'm not quite sure what I'll do, so just have to uh, see what ends up coming out. Thank you. Take care.